What's going on everybody? Johnny Bannon here and today we're going to be going over Domain 1.8, our emerging and modern network technology for our environments. So I think that's what it's called, yeah. Evolving use cases for modern network environments. So this is going to be a section that honestly we could take you know, a long, long time on. We could uh, break down SDN and different SD-WANs for a lot of different vendors for hours. It could be a 20-hour video just on like Cisco SD-WAN. Be another 10 hours for like Cisco SD Access. We could break down Junipers, Aruba's uh, SDN, SD-WAN environments. We'll go over Cisco Meraki for a long time. Uh, and then we talk about VXLAN here, the virtual extensible local area network, a data center technology that's allowed us to bridge local area networks that are geographically dispersed. We could talk about that for a long time. That could be a whole six to 10 hour video course. We talk about zero trust architecture. That could also be, I did make an hour long video on it on our Security Plus course because that's a cybersecurity centric course, right? We're looking at this stuff from a high level. So if you want to dive deeper into these technologies, there's great trainers online for free. YouTube, go to Udemy, other great companies, CBT Nuggets, Pluralsight. Uh, we currently do not have deep dives on those technologies until I make my CCMP course for the Cisco uh, SD-WAN solutions. But that's not, you know, just to give you a preface that this will be a high-level overview and just how you would look at it from your level, a network plus certified do network admin, you need to know these technologies. You only know how to configure them. You need to know what they do, what they accomplish, and the why behind it. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to zoom my face out because that is not important for our learning. Let's go ahead and get started. So here's our objectives here. As you can see, we're going to go SDN, SD-WAN, VXLAN, and Zero Trust Architecture. In our next video, we'll finish it off by going over Secure Access Secure Edge, and then SSE infrastructure as code and IPv6 addressing in our last video. Okay, so SDN and software defined networking. So this is a totally different concept from traditional networking. So in traditional networking, let's say an MPLS backbone, even our campus networks, talking SD WAN, SD access, you know, how we do software defined networking, the LAN and the WAN is very similar. The central concept is that in traditional networking, we have to manage via SSH session, a CLI, a bash terminal on a one by one basis. So we take that router, that switch, we configure it, we console in at first or we SSH and we configure it. And at that individual device is going to have a control plane and a data plane. A data plane for the actual bits, the, the data comes in, ingress and out, egress. That's always going to be there. But then in traditional networking, we have that control plane. That control plane is going to be how that device, uh, you know, communicates in the environment. So in our switching environments, we have things like Cisco Discovery Protocol, Spanning Tree Protocol in our control plane to prevent broadcast loop. CDP just does discovery. In our routing domains, our layer three in our routers, we have routing protocols, uh, OSPF, ERGRP, BGP, that tells us how we need to route IP-based traffic. That's the control plane. And that's configured at the individual device. Well, if software-defined networking and that extension SD-WAN, we take that control plane and centralize all that thinking, all the logic, all the routing policy, how we forward packets, our security policies, what we would typically configure at the individual level via CLI, we centralize it. We put it in a single controller. And then that controller has a centralized controlled environment for us to configure our network now, or what we would call our fabric underlay. So in SDN, as you can see, as I've written out here, or as I've drawn here, or really made in Canva, um, just get behind the scenes, um, that controller centralizes the control plane of what we call our fabric underlay of our hardware. And it's going to communicate with our hardware and push down configuration using a southbound interface, southbound APIs. And it's going to get that configuration from our northbound interfaces or our app from what we would do like HTTP messages um, and our configuration that we do from our machine. So the flow here in our software defined network and SD-WAN is gonna work similarly is we centralize the control plane of all of our network devices. We still have that fabric underlay, which is all of our hardware, our switches, our firewalls, our routers, our access points. And this is gonna be getting like netconf, could be rest comp. It could be traditional like XML, um, gang, and it's going to be getting configuration 
from the controller. And then the controller is going to be getting its configuration from us up here. This could be from a web GUI, like if we're in like SD-WAN environment or vManage, if we're in an SD-Axis in our Catalyst Center uh, web, web GUI, or this could be we have something like Postman, and we're pushing like doing post request or get request via a REST APIs, right, to the controller saying, hey, get me information, reformat it to JSON and present it to me, or we're doing post, which is like a change, hey, go and update this, to R1 and then push it down to R1 via your southbound or your net comp and rest comp. But that's the basics of SDN, a centralized view, okay? In a simple form, like if you go and look at a ubiquity environment, we control all of our hardware from one central panel, uh, one console, which would be a web GUI. And then SD-WAN is an extension of SDN technology that optimizes WANs. So this allows organizations to use all forms of different transports, MPLS, LTE, broadband, fiber, whatever the case may be, uh, to connect users securely to applications. What that kind of, beyond that definition, what we're saying here is that from a centralized view, and this is Cisco, like vManage, we can control all of our different spokes and have granular control on how we route traffic. So we can have that dual homed environment where our edge device connected to multiple different ISPs, whether it's LTE, and then this is like Starlink, then we can have another connection that's like MPLS. We can route traffic however we want, and we control that from our vManage, or from really our centralized controller, because that's really the purpose of SDN. Okay, so let's go over some definitions. So in SDN and SD-WAN, they're application aware. So we can prioritize traffic based on the application type, kind of like QoS and traditional networking, but now it's a lot more granular, a lot easier, because we're doing it from a centralized pane of glass, a single pane of glass. We have something called zero touch provisioning, where we can onboard devices, and all we have to do is plug in a device in our SDN environment. As long as that device can get a DHCP uh, assigned an IP address, now we can onboard it from a single pane of glass without having to go through and configure it in a traditional means. For SD-WAN, it's transport agnostic. It don't matter what the transport is. All we care about is the tunnels that we create between all of our edge devices and how we manage them. As long as we have IP address reachability, we'll build our IPsec, our OMP tunnels, Cisco. I'm from a Cisco background, so a lot of things I say are Cisco-based. And manage those WAN, those edge devices. And then, of course, we have central policy management. So whether we're updating, applying security profiles, updating configuration, it's all from a centralized place. It's all from a single pane of glass that we manage all of our fabric underlay of our architecture. Okay, now moving on. Now moving on to something called Virtual Extensible Local Area Network, VXLAN. This is a network virtualization technology that allows us to take two LANs, that are geographically dispersed over an IP transport network. So imagine this could be in like Phoenix. This could be in LA. We have our endpoints here that connect our data centers. VTEP stand for uh, virtual tunnel endpoints. So our tunnel endpoints have IP reachability. We can use our VXLAN technology to create a VXLAN tunnel between these virtual tunnel endpoints to make these servers and these devices believe that they're a part of the same local area network, that they're both a part of VLAN 10, and that they are layer two directly connected. So we call this data center interconnect. So VXLAN is used to connect different data centers by encapsulating layer two frames within layer two packets. And then VXLAN enables a seamless extension of a network across geographically dispersed data centers. So we have that layer two encapsulation. So VXLAN uses layer two encapsulation, which allows the creation of a virtual layer two network. So as you can see here, pretty cool, a VXLAN full packet is we have our original ethernet frame with our original payload, our original 802.1Q header. So if we're using VLANs, which typically this is how it's gonna be. And our original MAC header, we're gonna encapsulate that with a UDP packet, VXLAN header. Our IP header that's going to be connecting over that IP transport network. And then, of course, our new outer MAC, 
it's pretty cool, right? So it it allows us to kind of fix this issue where now we can even cluster, like let's say these are ESXi hosts. We can put these ESXi hosts in a single cluster, even though they're geographically dispersed, and now do VM motion over a VXLAN tunnel from Phoenix to our LA data center. So pretty awesome technology that enables some uh, seamless connectivity. Well, I say seamless, but, you know, VXLAN isn't the most simplest thing to configure. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about in this section is the Zero Trust architecture. So Zero Trust architecture is not a single solution that a vendor sells you. What it is is a framework on how to protect our new networks. So when I say our new networks, our hybrid networks that have cloud-based apps, that have remote access users, but we don't have that single intranet for our enterprise. A zero trust architecture is just a security model that has a few principles. One being never trust, always verify. So based off security principles called never trust, always verify. The principle of least privilege, meaning we only assign the exact amount of rights that a subject needs to access an object, so user, computer, whatever the case may be, giving them the exact permissions, that subject, then always assume breach. So zero trust architecture is a nice security model that says integrate all your different technologies, whether that be a CASP, an SASE, a, U a UTM appliance, data loss prevention, EDR and XDR, your antivirus, your firewalls, integrate all that into a security trust model that says we need to always assume breach. So continuous monitoring, right? When we assign permissions, use the principle of least privilege. And when that subject is accessing an object, which could just be a user accessing like a file share in our data center, never trust, always verify, meaning always have them re-verify, whether that's with a multi-factor authentication, whether that's some contextual analysis where we say, hey, we see this user trying to access this from New York when they're based in Phoenix, so put second or three-factor authentication on that. Never trust, always verify, okay? And we accomplish this by integrating a bunch of different security technologies and principles by creating a control plane with a policy engine and a policy administrator so that is maybe like our LDAP, Active Directory, and that policy administrator is us configuring group policy objects and integrating that into a policy enforcement point. So when that subject turns on that remote access VPN, we're making them authenticate with their credentials. And then we set up two-factor authentication. So they also have to use like uh, a one-time password or a push notification to even get on the network with that VPN. And that's just a small example, okay? Zero trust, again, can be a, a much, a lot deeper. We can dive deeper into it. There's a lot that goes into zero trust, but this is just the basics, okay, of what zero trust is. As long as you know these three principles, you're going to be pretty good with understanding zero trust, hopefully for the exam. All right, now let's do our quiz. Okay, so at our LMS, we're going to click on our Network Plus exam. We're going to go to our quizzes here. And we're going to go to domain 1.8.1. And we're going to retry this quiz, okay? I already got 100 on it, but hey, we're going to retry it. Okay, let's do this quiz. So question one, what is the primary benefit of zero-touch provisioning in an SD-WAN environment? So we're going to go with B here, right? It automatically configures and deploys network devices without manual intervention. Look at our explanation here. Awesome. Question two, which of the following best describes software-defined networking? Hardware-based. We're going to go with C, a networking model that uses software-based controllers to manage and automate network traffic. A lot of these we can get rid of because traditional network, no, right? Awesome. And just, I didn't say this in the PowerPoints, but SDN is also how we do cloud networking. It's all SDN based. Okay, just moving on. <laughs> just a little tidbit for you. Question three, what is the main purpose of virtual extensible local area network in a data center environment? 
We don't increase the physical routers. We don't replace layer 3 networks. We're going to go with D. To address scalability issues associated with traditional VLANs. And we extend it, right? We're able to make a layer 2 connection in a geographically dispersed environment. In the context of SDN and SD-WAN, what does application aware mean? So we're going to go with B. The network prioritizes traffic based on the type of application to ensure optimal performance. Question five. Which of the following is a key characteristic of software-defined wide area network? So I'm going to go with A. I don't even need to read the rest. It is transport agnostic, something that's very vital to understanding SD-WAN. Question six. Which, which principle is not a core component of zero trust architecture? This one's easy too. Yeah, A. I mean, always trust users once they're inside the network perimeter. No, it's never trust, always verify for zero trust architecture. And look at that. We got 100%. So I want to thank everyone for viewing. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that bell and tell your friends. I use Trevor Technologies to get certified. And we'll see you in the next video when we finish up Domain 1.